Hello and welcome to New Milton Baptist Church. During this time of lockdown, our ministry has taken a couple of weeks off, so the services for the next two weeks are going to be just a little bit different. I'm pleased to say that James Bromley agreed to record a message for us this week, and next week the Reverend Sharon Pryor has stepped in to record two services for us. Then, at the end of the month, our ministry returns. Batteries recharged, we hope, at the start of Advent. Hear these words from Psalm 16. Keep me safe, my God, for you it for in you I take refuge. Lord, you alone are my portion and cup. You make my lot secure. Now we'll have a reading from John's Gospel. The passage I'm reading is from John 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd, he does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down from, of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. Thanks be to God for his word. I'm now going to read the words of a hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. The King of Love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth. And where the verdant pastures grow, with food celestial feedeth. Perverse and foolish oft I strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. In death's dark veil I fear no ill, with thee, dear Lord, beside me. Thy rod and staff my comfort still, thy cross before to guide me. Thou spreads the table in my sight, thy unction grace bestoweth, and oh what transport of delight from thy pure chalice floweth. And so through all the length of days thy goodness faileth never. Good Shepherd, may I sing thy praise within thy house for ever. And now we will have the message from James Bromley. Good morning, folks. My name is James Bromley. I have the opportunity and privilege of sharing with you from Psalm 23. I'm going to read the verses first. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou dost prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My sermon this morning is entitled, 
the Good Shepherd. The psalm gives us great insight in the Lord, Je at the Lord Jesus Christ, our Shepherd, where we see that as a caring Shepherd, He provides, He protects, He predicts. But I really believe the psalm would lose all its punch without that personal my. The important question to ask yourself, myself, is the Lord my shepherd? Because I really believe as he is our shepherd, it really helps in time of unfathomable grief or all times, providing comfort and assurance. But let's look at those three points. What does the shepherd provide? Let's read those verses. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, King David could have called God anything. He could have called God king, ruler, rock. But for good reason, he says, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. Jesus provides everything that we need. The shepherd makes his sheep to lie down with more than enough grass, plenty of clear, refreshing, cool water. The flock is content. That is the first thing that is provided, contentment. As followers of Christ, we don't have to keep on trying to fill the void that we did have before knowing him. We don't have to drink to get rid of that emptiness in our hearts or party it away. We don't have to buy it away. In fact, in the Old Testament, King Solomon, Ecclesiastes talks about pursuing these ends of drink and everything else. He pursued these fantasies and possessions, thrills and spills. But his closing comment is worth noting, vanity of vanity. All is vanity, emptiness. Jesus gives us contentment. Another thing we see is that he restores the soul. The question I ask is, how many times has your soul been ravaged? That you felt your heart been ripped apart. You've maybe said, I've been let down by my closest friend. Just this past year, my spouse left me. Last week I was retrenched. I believe all of us have endured hardship after hardship, disaster after disaster, blow after blow. But in the face of this kind of difficulties, the shepherd promises and does restore our souls. And I can say tenderly, carefully, completely. There's another thing that the shepherd provides, and that's guidance. It says in the scripture, he leads me, he guides me in paths of righteousness. It is often with tragedy that the result is confusion. Catastrophe and confusion seem to go hand in hand. And we lose our landmark, the familiar things we look at when we're confused. But Jesus becomes our landmark in times of catastrophe and confusion. He gives us quiet assurance as the shepherd and provides guidance. How does he do that? Through his word, through the encouragement of fellow believers, by the whisper of the Holy Spirit in our ear. The other thing that the shepherd does is that he protects. Let's read verses 4 and 5. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. King David knew about God's protection. He knew of the sounds of swords slashing, clashing and battle. He knew of arrows whizzing past his head and his ears. He knew about his men and the troops dying on either side. But King David, with all this, is able to say, even in every, when everything looks dark, when moments are away from destruction, 
He said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. The shepherd goes on, not only protecting and preserving, it says, yet in the midst of battle, God, you will set out a seven-course meal for me. The point being made, folks, is Jesus does not promise that all the battles of life will disappear, but he does promise to protect us in the midst of it all. There's another saying that I really like, and it's about Jesus in the boat with his disciples on the Sea of Galilee. They feared and they were worried, but this is a saying, it may not be smooth sailing, but it will be safe. I can remember in Africa when our children were small and we had the massive thunder, lightning storms. So often the children would run to mommy and daddy's bed, worried and fearful. But we'd say to them, don't worry, we've got you. And soon they would be asleep. Our heavenly daddy, our heavenly father, the Lord Jesus as well, says this, I'm going to wrap my arms around you and protect you. I'm going to prepare a table before you in the midst of battle. I'm going to make your cup overflow. Thirdly, the shepherd predicts. Let's read verse 6. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. People have such a fascination about what lies ahead about predictions. They read poems, they read tea leaves, stars, tarot cards, in their quest to know the future. But there's another way to know, and the Lord Jesus Christ tells it in straight talk in the scripture. It is free and it's not misleading. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The first prediction given here comes with those words, follow me. That's the shepherd, the good shepherd saying, I'll track you down, I'll pursue you, and to bestow loving kindness and tender mercy. Folks, we're not talking about no, no hassles in life, but it's talking and giving a promise of inequality of life that the shepherd can only give. There's a second prediction. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm so glad I'll stay on this earth as but a temporary assignment. Still to come and predict it as an eternal heavenly home. And we know it will be with no sin, no pain, no tears. We read that in Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. So in conclusion, I want to say this. The bottom line is that we all need the Good Shepherd. We need his provision. We need his protection. We need him to uphold and control our future. The question we need to ask, is the Lord your Shepherd, my Shepherd? But maybe in your heart of hearts you hesitate to think that the God of the universe who created so much and created you and I wants to live in your heart and address your very needs and desires. I came across a wonderful illustration. I'm going to read it to you called The Great Transformation. It was written by a filmmaker, Mr. DeMille, and this is what he wrote in his journal. One day, I was lying in a canoe. A big black beetle came out of the water and climbed up into the canoe. I watched it idly for some time. Under the heat of the sun, the beetle proceeded to die. Then a strange thing happened. The shapeless mass quickly transformed into beautiful, brilliantly coloured life. As I watched in fascination, there gradually unfolded iridescent wings from which the sunlight flashed a thousand colours. The wings spread wide as if in worship to the sun. The blue-green body took shape. Before my eyes had occurred a metamorphosis, the transformation of a hideous beetle into a gorgeous dragonfly, which started dipping and soaring over the water, but the body it had left behind still clung to my canoe. I had witnessed what seemed to me a miracle. Out of the mud had come a beautiful new life. 
and the thought came to me, continued Mr. DeMille, that if the Creator works such wonders with the lowest of creatures, what may not be in store for the human spirit? God bless you. I trust you've been encouraged. Maybe we can just have a prayer at this moment in time. Dear Lord, thank you that you are our good shepherd. Even from John 10, we know that you claim and proclaim that you're the good shepherd. Thank you that you provide. Thank you that you protect. Thank you that you have provided a wonderful future in you. And you pursue us, follow us with loving kindness and tender mercies. For each and every one of us, may this be so at this moment in time, where things seem catastrophic or so confusing. Give us guidance, restore our souls, and let us be content in you. For I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are here with us. You do not forsake us, despite our shortcomings. And you care for us, each and every one of us, wherever we are. We would ask that you would be with us and would guide us in our thoughts and our actions. We would ask that you would be with all those who are worried about coronavirus, now that we're in another lockdown period. Be with those who are suffering from coronavirus and those who have been bereaved, those who are lonely and those who are depressed. For the health workers tending the seriously ill, for the scientists working on a vaccination, for all the hospital staff, the doctors, nurses, healthcare staff, laboratory technicians, cooks, cleaners and everyone else. Lord, we ask for a blessing on each and every one and we thank you that there has been some good news concerning a vaccine. We ask that you would bless our country with your wisdom, your love and your compassion. May we be a people who are pursuing you and your plans for us individually and corporately. Lord, we ask for blessings on our leaders. May these servants, who are in positions of authority, take that responsibility seriously and do their very best each day. May they realise their need for you and for your direction. May they hear your voice as they make their decisions. And may they follow your guidance. May they have a passion for people, for truth and for righteousness. We pray for the wider world. We pray that peace would reign supreme over the whole planet and that all would realise that you are the true, the one and only God. For those who worship you in countries where this is frowned upon, we ask that you keep your people safe. May they not only know that you are with them, but there are many in the so-called free world who pray for them each and every day. Closer to home, Lord, we pray for those in our local community. We thank you that we are not a hot spot for the virus here in New Milton, but we have many who are suffering in different ways. So we pray for those who are already very anxious, for those immune suppressed or compromised, for those vulnerable because of underlying conditions, for those in the most at risk of coronavirus categories, for those watching their entire income stream dry up, for those who have no choice but to go out to work, for those who are afraid to be at home, for those who are more lonely than they've ever been, and for those who are bereaved and grieving. God, be their healer, their comfort and their protection. Be their strength, their shield and their provision. Be their security, their safety and their close companion. And Heavenly Father, bring them all closer to you. Amen.
Now let's say the, the prayer that Jesus taught each one of us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's finish with the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all today and always. Amen.